everybody. Welcome back to sunny Schaefer, Michigan. It's September 30th. Uh, phone says it's 70 degrees. Um, feels hotter than that. There's no way this is the weather that I expected for the end of September. Um, I'm going to give you a pumpkin patch update today. Take you for a walk out here, show you what the vines are looking like. Um, there are still some pumpkins that have not completely turned. We have numerous trailer loads of completely ripe, completely pure orange, large carvers, medium sized, small decorative, whites, jardales, those are the green blue. Um, we have warty varieties this year, which are my personal favorites. Um, you can see in the background here that there, as the vines and it hasn't even had been that cold, like maybe one really light frost a few days ago. Um, I think it was uh, forecast to be 37 or 38. And in the morning there was a very light frost. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe 40s, 50s at night. So the vines have not completely withered back from a complete heavy killing frost. Um, so if it's still out here and hasn't turned because of the beautiful weather, um, the sun does help and promote in the turning. Um, so a lot of these, as the, vine, as the vine dies back and it exposes the pumpkin to the sun, then they'll turn. If we pick them green, we leave them on a trailer in the sun and the sun will turn them um, once they've been picked. But uh, yeah. You can see, I don't know if any of that, did that, did any of that just make sense? Uh, sometimes they start rambling. You can see there's deer damage on that one. Um, it has been uh, a full out battle against the deer. A um, lot of damage, a lot of damage. I'm going to turn the phone around here. There's a small, just a small basketball size that was eaten. And then you can see we've got a partially turned uh, large carver there. That's I'm not exactly the sure on that on that particular one based on this row, but uh, a type that we tried this year was Igor. It's a type. It's called Igor, and it's a really large carver. They're beautiful pumpkins. They are just so heavy. Um, it it makes the picking pumpkins way more difficult than it should be deer tracks deer damage um this is not a one man one man operation with this many pumpkins my wife kids my in-laws mother-in-law father-in-law sister-in-law um i i think the nephews have been out nieces nephews uh helping bring in the pumpkins um if it's wet or damp, the pumpkins are full of mud. When they come back, they need to be cleaned. So the best thing that works is like a uh, scrub brush um, that you would normally find under your kitchen sink. Those work great. Even when the mud dries on a pumpkin, that'll brush off uh, fairly decent. And then we also have the old water tank on the four-wheeler and just a drizzle of water and then scrubbing that dirt off. So. The pumpkins coming back need to be cleaned. There's like a cleaning station that we've set up. And uh, yeah, so there's still plenty out here to pick that are just still out here ripening on the vine. We've got uh, most of the stuff that's back is already completely ripe. Um, and there's probably two trailer loads out here that could be picked that are already ripe. We just haven't got to them because as you know, life happens. Uh, where do I go? I'm gonna try this way. And the hard thing about uh, early picking is trying to get in here with a trailer, four wheeler, side-by-side, uh, -side, tractor and a wagon. You know, the vines are all stretched out, tangled up mess, and you can't really drive through and run over your, uh, your pumpkins or the vine or some greens that are still turning. So. It's a matter of snaking your way through here and uh, trying to find uh, the right spot to get to them. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you quick 
was something that we discovered today that I think is pretty neat. So, as you may recall, I'm gonna turn the phone around here. We had uh, four rows of cow corn, and then we had four rows of decorative bicolor Indian corn. There was one row of strawberry, that's called strawberry. It's just a very small um, cob and a short plant. Um, are any of these showing? The corn cross-pollinated and some of this cow corn, let's see, some of this cow corn has bicolored kernels. Um, glass gem, I think she called it a glass gem was the decorative corn. And uh, if you peel back, I don't know if it's just on the end. Anyway, super cool. The corn stalks, the corn stalk bundles are doing great. You can see I've cut uh, one, two, three rows out of here. Uh, one to its entirety right, right through the middle. And then the sunflowers, obviously we've been uh, harvesting those and the flowers here. <sighs> really cool, we had a bride and her mother and the sisters here today. Um, it's nice to see somebody enjoying the the, uh, the fruits of your labor. Um, this is my wife's brainchild. All these flowers, this decorative corn, these sunflowers. I'm gonna turn the phone around here. It's too beautiful not to show you. She's got, I, I, I don't know the names of these flowers. Um, she does. Like I said, this is her show. I don't know what those beautiful pink ones are, purple, pink, what these ones are. You can see a small variety of sunflower that's already already past its prime. We get the pollinators still at work. These flowers are just gorgeous. These sunflowers are a shorter variety. These are the ones for um, like for stems and for picking if you were going to put them in vases. Um, and, and a few of those went. It's really neat. All right. Then, of course, we've got these Whopper sunflowers on the end, which we will, at the end, harvest and put those gigantic sunflower heads right in the pumpkin, or right in the uh, chicken run. And our chickens will peck the sunflowers right out of there. All right, how long, how, what do we got? Eight minutes here, okay. I'm gonna do this quick, try and keep the video close to 10 minutes. Like I said, here are the trailers picked. Um, these are smaller, medium size. We've got a bunch of larger ones. And then of course, we've got the lot set up here with all of our varieties. This is one of the neatest, neatest bins now, we've got nicknames for these. There's actual names for these uh, varieties. Um, I'll be damned if I can remember them. <laughs> Birdhouse gourds, um, mini warts, warty goblins, uh, blaze. I think those uh, smaller yellow striped ones are blaze. We've got pie pumpkins over here with these blaze got a nice little variety trailer over here these are these are such a neat a neat pumpkin this year these ones with these warts on them and then of course these cool ones here are called baby doll uh porcelain dolls or pinks we just call them pinks and then these smaller uh, small to medium sized carvers uh what were these ones cinderellas i believe these these uh, really deep orange, yellow are Cinderella's. I've got a magazine here that has all the types. Um, there you can see the difference between an Igor and maybe a, a champion or a renegade. These uh, Igors are just really tall, um, big carvers. And then as always, we've got whites. 
and the Jardales, and then these really cool warty ones. We had these last year, and then of course, these are new for this year. And uh, like I said, I've got nicknames for them. We just call them the warty ones, but they're, they're, there's warty goblins and knuckleheads. And I don't know which one is which. It really doesn't matter. So that's it, guys. That's, uh, that's kind of a quick update on the pumpkin patch and, uh, and our pumpkin sales lot out in front of the barn here. Um, yeah, I think, I think we, uh, we've got a really neat setup this year, neat variety, and everything is coming up great. The only uh, downfall is those damn deer. Um, but we do battle every year, so... Anyways, guys, that's it. That's my uh, 11 minute and 40 second update on the pumpkin patch. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I was able to show you some uh, show you some neat things. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.